Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Dyson Outsize Absolute Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. And what I want to do today is to show you around the vacuum, some of the features and benefits that it offers. I'll show you all the different tools and what they do. Uh, also I'll give you a demo of it, so we'll actually get it in action to see how well it performs. But all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel just before we start. What I do is I normally talk about household appliances. I do specialise in cordless vacuums like this and there's normally a bit of tech in there as well. So just give us a quick subscribe, see the thumbs up and then we'll carry on. First of all, we'll get the vacuum unboxed. Now I have talked about quite a few different Dysons over the years, uh, but none of them have shouted at me like this. This, this just shouts big, impressive, um, I must say, so far none of the others have, have really done that. So this is the, uh, first of all, the instruction book. Uh, I must say I'm not too au fait with instructions, so we'll put that to one side. And uh, quite a few different tools and accessories. So I'll let's, let's start to take these out. These are quite common accessories. The, little crevice tool and we've got the combination tool here. There are one or two things that I'm quite excited to see in this model. Uh, this is the new uh, laser pad. It's a fluffy head as well. So this will be uh, it's the laser detect. So we'll, we'll give that a good go because I'm really interested to see how, how this performs. Christmas this is. So Dyson have gone for a, a red colour. I, I do love the colours that Dyson come up with. And it's got on there the Dyson Outsize Absolute. Just pop that to one side. We've got a, a wand clip. So that's to help store some of the tools. What I'm really pleased with, and I have mentioned it before in some of my other videos, that, that Dyson will use a lot of recyclable material. Uh, all of, pretty much all of this is uh, cardboard. And we've got some extra packaging in here just to keep everything steady while it's in transit. Uh, so even bits like this, although they're not doing anything, what they're doing is it's just holding everything steady while it's been moved around or shipped around the country. And the next one we've got this is the if I can get this one out. It's the soft dusting brush. So that's normally that's normally quite a popular one. And we've got the wall bracket in here. So I'll get all of that out in, in a moment. What have we got here? So we've got two chargers. So we've got two chargers in there. And a little battery in the charger. So yeah, let's pop that to one side for a moment. Uh, this is another new tool that I'm quite interested to, to have a look at. Uh, Anti-tangle screw. Uh, this is the what's called a hair screw tool. Uh, it looks like they've got rid of the, the mini motorised brush and replaced it with this. So again, we'll have a good look at that in a bit. I'm running out of space here. Main floor head, again a huge floor head, mammoth. And with this one, uh, this is uh, again quite a lot bigger. But I, I, what I will do is I will show you a comparison between this and say the V11 model. Uh, let's try and find space for that. I think last of all, see even the extra packaging that Dyson are using is it's paper, uh, so easily recyclable. A lot of other manufacturers are still sticking with plastic, uh, which a lot of it isn't recyclable. And this is the the vacuum itself. So it's a it it is a really impressive vacuum. This. So I think what I need to do is I need to get the packaging clear, 
make some space, and then we'll start to have a look around this really impressive vacuum. Now everything's unboxed, uh, I've got all the tools and accessories out, now we can start to have a look around the vacuum itself. Uh, as I keep saying, it's big, it's impressive. This is the, the American breakfast of cordless vacuum cleaners, but everything about it shouts I'm here and ready to be used. Uh, so first thing, uh, clearly when it comes to using the vacuum, uh, it still uses the standard trigger design. This kind of concept I've seen over use for years. Uh, some of the manufacturers have gone to like a switch where you just switch it on and you leave it. Um, personally, I, I, I still agree with Dyson that this is normally the better way to go. Uh, I know some people aren't too keen on it. Some people prefer to have a switch that you just switch on. Uh, but what Dyson claim is that you do increase the runtime uh, because when you're moving the vacuum around in an area that you're not vacuuming, then that's, I suppose, wasting the battery. So by having a trigger system, then that's really the way to go, and that's the way. That's really what Dyson is sticking with. Uh, you will notice that first of all, the as I keep mentioning, that the, the bin is very impressive size. So on this one, the capacity on here is 1.9 liters. Now I know for some people it might not need, mean that much, uh, but if you compare it to the model below this, which is the V11 at this time of recording, then that has a capacity of 0.76 liters. So it's 150% bigger. Uh, I have actually got a V11 here. So I'll just show you that, I know it's a little bit dirty. But just to show you the two here, uh, you can see how, how much bigger the outsize is compared to the V11. It makes it look quite tiny actually. Uh, clearly if you are going to be concerned about the weight on the vacuum, if weight is a high priority for you, then this may not be the one to go for because I'll be honest it's not the lightest vacuum on the market uh, but you wouldn't be able to have something like this and to make it very lightweight at the same time. So when it comes to emptying the bin uh, it's using this method so you've got a, a little clip underneath I'll just show you that again so you've got the clip under there all you do is you go over to your bin ideally do this outside uh, especially with this size bin you can have a lot of dirt or dust in it so ideally go to your outside bin, um, just press that and then the flap opens at the end here. You do have the option to take the bin off to clean it and there's a little switch here sort of hiding around the corner and if you press that in then you can actually take the bin off. Uh, with these, I mean I, over the years, if, I don't know if you've followed me on YouTube for a while, I have done quite a few cleaning videos on Dyson vacuums which go down really well. Uh, on this one you you can wash it, I suppose. Uh, I think with a lot of these now, it's recommended if you get a damp microfiber cloth and just clean inside here. You will notice that you've got a red rubber seal just on the inside here. So if you do clean it, then just make sure you give that a good wipe as well, because that can uh, make a difference when it comes to putting it back on the vacuum. And all you do is you just slide that back on, make sure it's located into place, and then you can shut the lid and carry on. Just while I was talking about the cleaning, uh, on the inside here, I'll just show you this. Uh, you've got this, this metal shroud. Uh, what you will find, you don't want to get that necessarily wet, so you don't definitely don't want to wash it. Uh, again, I'd just first of all use a paintbrush to clean it, so just, just get the worst off with a dry paintbrush or something. Uh, and then again, just get a damp microfiber, microfiber cloth, put my teeth back in, uh, just to, to wipe around it, that's normally uh, suitable for things like that and again do it all outside um, some of the cleaning videos I've done I have done it in in a utility uh, so that's okay but I suppose for a lot of people if you're brushing it doing a well ventilated area as far as the filtration on this you have got the filter on the back that's easily removed uh, again it's a, a washable filter it's got a picture of a tap on the side here um, again just when you when you wash this, make sure you leave it for 24 hours to dry fully. Uh, what you don't want to do is to wash it, leave it on the side for an hour, and then put it back on the vacuum because there's a very very good chance that you will damage the vacuum because it will still be damp. What I normally recommend, and I suppose when buying any cordless, it doesn't have to be a Dyson, when you buy any cordless vacuum that where you've got washable filters, I always recommend buying a spare filter. Uh, the main reason for that is what you can do, you can actually uh, once you've washed the filter, then you can put that on the side, leave it for a good 24 hours or more to fully dry, 
and while you're doing that then pop the other filter onto the vacuum and it just means you're not going for a period of not having a filter to vacuum so that's something I recommend and I will I'll try and find one uh, for you with a good price or pop a link below and then all that does is that just slots on there twist and then you're ready to, to vacuum again so on this model at the back here you have got a little display uh, what you will find is that when you first get the vacuum it will need to be fully charged um, at the moment we've got uh, it does there is a little sticker on it that says it's 20 percent charged um, but what you've got here, you've actually got different modes and by pressing the button. So clearly at the moment it's, it's not fully charged. Uh, but if we were to use it on the, the minimum suction, uh, then we'll get around 28 minutes from the, the power that we've got in here at the moment. So just to give you an idea, so the runtime on this model is 120 minutes. So potentially you've got two hours runtime uh, across the two batteries because it does come with two batteries. So as I showed you when we unbox the vacuum, you do get two charges with it, and also you have got a spare battery as well. And the advantage is that, in theory, what you can do is you can have the vacuum on the wall bracket. Uh, so you could have that, and you could have one of the chargers linked up to that, so you could have the vacuum charging. Also, at the same time, you could have the second charger charging the second battery. And that's really, really good. Um, it's the first time I've seen Dyson do this. Uh, I know you have got the option to buy spare batteries, uh, but I'm really pleased that they've provided a second one. And with that, again, you've got up to two hours runtime. Now, for a lot of people, two hours in one go, if you're to vacuum in one go for two hours, it's that's a, a huge amount of time. Uh, but the only thing to mention is that the two hour runtime will be on the minimum suction, and that's really what I've shown you back here, uh, that this is the... So you've got different settings, so you've got the eco, medium, and then you've got the boost. So with the limited power I've got in here, which is probably around 20%, then if you're going to use it on the boost, then you'd only get around 3 or 4 minutes. Um, and So clearly on the minimum suction uh, for the amount of power I've got in here, you're looking around 25 to 30 minutes. And that will normally vary depending on what you're going to vacuum. Uh, as far as things like the runtime, again, it does make a huge difference. So if you're going to use it as a handheld, uh, say with the crevice tool on, then 120 minutes plus is easily achievable. Uh, what you can find is if you're going to use it with the floor head, uh, especially if you're going to use it uh, say on a say a thick pole carpet, then the run time, even if you were to use it on the minimum suction, then that can be reduced. Uh, but really it's a case of trial and error, uh, but at least you'll find with the two batteries, two chargers that Dyson have given us, then run time shouldn't be an issue. When it comes to changing the battery, so you realise that this one is flat, then you want to change it over for the fully charged one. What you can do is you just press the button on the front here, and then it just drops off. So really, really easy. Um, I'm, I'm impressed how easy Dyson have made this. Um, on some of the other vacuums, you do have to take out a couple of screws. It's a little bit uh, labor intensive to do that, but you just load it back onto there and then you're ready to go with a fully charged battery. What I want to do now is to show you the tools and accessories that it comes with. So the first one is this. This is the main drive floor head. Uh, this is the High Torque XL floor head. Um, and this kind of floor head is 25% bigger than on the V11 Absolute model. So I'll just show you this. So as far as sizes go, this is 32 centimeters, again, 25 centimeters on the V11. So hopefully you can see that there is quite a difference between the two. Um, and clearly by having the larger floor head, then it, in a nutshell, it means that you're not having to vacuum for so, so long. Uh, if you have got a large area that you need to vacuum, if you're current covering a larger area, then you don't need to vacuum for so long. Um, and I think that's brilliant because some of the cordless vacuums that manufacturers produce, uh, you've got a really small floor head and it just means you're going up and down, you're vacuuming for ages. Uh, but up the front here, you have got a switch. So depending on what you were sucking up, what this does, this actually varies. Uh, just show you this underneath. 
So hopefully you can see that. Uh, so if there were large particles, say things like cereal, then what you'd want to do is you want to change it over so it just makes room for the cereal to go up to be sucked up into the into the bin. Uh, as far as the brushes underneath, it's actually a, a combination of two. You've actually got so the stiff bristle brush and also you've got these soft bristles and you've still got the ability to take this out and to clean it. Uh, on some of the older vacuums, uh, what you'd normally needed to do is to get a coin or a screwdriver, pop it in the side, twist it. Uh, but that, although it, on, on its own, it is quite easy to do. Uh, but what Darson have done is they've made it even easier now. So it's just a little switch on the side. All you do is you just take that off and then that pulls out. So a really nice, easy, simple design. And then when you're ready to put it back in, you just pop that, pop that in there, make sure it's all lined up and then it just clicks back into place. And this is a new tool that comes with a vacuum as well. Uh, this is quite a new addition to the range. Uh, they've only just launched it this year. Uh, it is on a couple of models. So it is on some of the V15 models as well, as well as this uh, outsize absolute model. Uh, but this is what they call the laser detect. Um, and the idea of this, and there are quite a few videos going around the, the internet at the moment on what it does. Uh, but the idea of this is that it will actually uh, show you the particles of dust and dirt that you can't normally see um, and it'll be interesting to try it I, I am going to give it a go in, in a bit uh, but the idea is it's a it's a green laser that shines on the floor uh, and the laser actually shines 7.3 millimeters above the floor at an angle of 1.5 degrees so the very very specific angles and the the size of the laser to detect these particles of dust and dirt uh, so again, it will be interesting to try it. It's not the same size as the, the other tool I just showed you. Uh, I think this has different applications. So I'm, again, I'm glad they kept it this size. Uh, but with this, it is using the standard fluffy head. And again, you can take that apart if you wanted to take it out. You just twist that at the side and then take that out and, and clean it. So these are washable. Uh, it is recommended to wash it on the odd occasion. Uh, I suppose really depending on the surface that you vacuum in, depends on how dirty this gets. Uh, but we do recommend, again, same as a filter, to let it dry completely before you put it back in the vacuum. Uh, and all, it, all that happens is you just pop it back on here and then clip it back into place. Just going back to the laser, uh, you do have the option to switch it off. So if you just wanted to use the, the fluffy head itself, uh, without the laser then just flick the switch and then the laser turns off. So the next tool that comes with it, these tools are designed to be used as a handheld. So it's using this the QR or quick release system that Dyson call it. Uh, I'm pleased they've stuck with this. Uh, this is a, a really good idea. Um, what it means is that any tools that you've got you can use on this model as well. So as long as it's a V7, V8, V10, V11, V15, then any of the tools that use this quick release system, then you can use it on this model. Uh, some of the previous ones, so if you go back to the early days of the Dyson cordless, things like the V6 and the starting before that, then you won't be able to use it because they didn't use this system. So this tool is quite a new addition to the range. This is called the hair screw tool. Uh, and manufacturers have realized that people with uh, other pets or family members with long hair can get clogged into these brushes uh, and it can be really frustrating to have to take the brush apart uh, and to unwind all the hair or to get some scissors or a knife and try and do that. It's, it's a really annoying task and nobody enjoys doing that. Uh, some manufacturers came up with this concept a couple of years ago uh, and I must admit, I, I won't mention the brand but they've come up with it and it does really well. And what Dyson have done is they've come up with their own version of it. Uh, it's completely unique. I must say I did. I really like the design of it. Uh, what they've done is they've got rid of the the mini motorized head, which was the the standard design head, and they've replaced it with this the hair screw tool. And the idea is that it just stops the tangling of the hair around the central point on this. That's why Dyson call it the the anti tangle screw. Uh, but what you have got the ability to do is you can still take this apart if you want to. You have got a little switch 
just on the on the back here. So if you take that out, so sorry, to flick that, then what you can do is you can pull that apart, uh, and you've still got the ability to clean it if you want to. Uh, I think they've done this not so much to, to get the hair off it, because the idea is that this shouldn't get any hair around it. Uh, but I suppose really the idea is that people do want to keep their items clean. And then to put it back together, you just need to make sure you locate it underneath here. And then that just pushes together. You just push the clip back on there and then you're ready to go with that tool. So the next tools that come with a vacuum are more the traditional type. Uh, this is the classic combination tool. And the idea is that it uses a little upholstery brush at the end here. And then if you press the button, then that just goes up and you've got a softer brush at the end there. Uh, the next one is a soft dusting brush, uh, so they're really soft bristles. Uh, the best way I would describe, the, I suppose the best application for this is if you're going, say, on a keyboard, on, say on a computer keyboard, something like that, or if you're going around the hub in the kitchen, where you want to make sure you don't damage or scratch anything, so that's a really good gentle brush to use. Uh, the next one is this. This is the cheeky little crevice tool. Uh, this has been a, I suppose, a mainstay for years. Dyson have always provided these on the vacuums. It doesn't matter which model it is, how high or low in the range it is, crevice tool is always a, a popular one that comes with it. And the main one that it comes with, again, that just clips on onto the vacuum itself. Uh, you have got the ability to use the tools in here if you want to. So if you wanted to, say, get some cobwebs from up in the corner, then just pop them on the end there, and then you can use it like that. Uh, as well as, just pop that to the side. Uh, so with this, it does actually come with this. This is a wand clip, and the idea is that you can just clip it on there, and then you can actually attach a couple of the tools onto it as well. Uh, that's really good. And I suppose what they've done is they've thought that if you're going to go out and vacuum for a couple of hours, uh, for me it would almost be like going on a mission, going to to go and vacuum around the house. Uh, clearly you'd need quite a big house if you're going to go and vacuum for two hours. Uh, but what you don't want to be doing is going to and fro in to, to go and get the different tools. So I'm glad that they've done that. Um, and I suppose weight on this vacuum isn't the highest priority. So by adding this, although it adds a little bit of weight to the vacuum, I'm glad they've they've done that. Uh, on the wall bracket itself, so you do get a wall bracket, uh, you have got space for a couple of tools underneath if you want to pop them as well. So what I want to do in this demonstration is to show you the time on the vacuum itself. So I know what it does is it will actually show you the time remaining that you've got on this battery, which is always a brilliant idea. Uh, you have got an auto setting. So I know I did mention earlier about that you've got the boost, medium, and the eco, and you can change it manually. But with the auto setting, what it will do is it will actually adjust it on its own. So I just want to give you a demonstration of that. Um, I suppose the idea is listen to the sound of the vacuum as I'm vacuuming just on the floor, and then when I start to suck up the, I've got some porridge oats, first of all, and then I've got a bit of sawdust at the end. Uh, but just keep an eye on, uh, first of all, the suction, and also the time on here, because hopefully that should change as well. still telling me I need to charge it. Uh, but hopefully you could see that it was changing between around eight minutes and 14 minutes. Uh, and also the suction was increasing and decreasing depending on what I was vacuuming. So I know it's in a very quick, very basic demonstration, but that sort of thing is really, really good. So what I want to do now is to show you the laser slim fluffy clean head. Um, and th I suppose the demonstration I've got here, again, I've put some sawdust on the floor. Um, it's probably not going to be quite as advantageous as some of the Dyson adverts because uh, clearly what I've done is we've got a, a blue carpet and then some of the dust that we've got is a much lighter colour uh, so it's quite easy to see but I suppose the whole idea of this floor head 
is that it's designed to show you areas where you can't see the dust or dirt particles. Uh, but what I'll do is, I'll, first of all, I'll, I'll give it a go, just see how well it performs. So as always, it does perform very well. Uh, you will find that the on this carpet, because it's quite a short, wiry carpet, it's quite a, a horrible surface to vacuum on. Uh, what I will do is, I will actually do the demonstration again, but I will go and turn the light off. Because uh, I think by having the light on, it, you don't quite get the full effect of it. So I've got some ambient light in the background, uh, but let's see how we get on with this. I think that was a lot better, um, but I do think if we had, say, a, a hard floor surface, and if the dirt and the dust is a similar colour to the floor that you're on, then I think the, the demonstration will be a little bit better. I suppose personally I'd say what Dyson have done is with their customer research, they've got a real winner on their hands this time. Uh, a lot of customers will come along and say, well, 60 minutes, that's not really long enough for what I want. So they've come up with a solution of being able to vacuum for two hours. Also the bin capacity, I think it's a real winner, going up from 0.76 litres on the V11 up to 1.9 litres on this model. Uh, again, that's a, a real winner for Dyson. Uh, if you are tempted, if, if, if you're as impressed as I am, uh, and if you are thinking about buying one of these models, I have provided a couple of links below to show you where to get them at competitive prices. I hope you enjoy this quick video on the Dyson Outsize Absolute Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. Please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video, leave any comments below. Now I know there could be quite a few different demonstrations that I could have done, I uh, just wanted to give you a couple of demos just to show you it in action. Uh, but again, leave any comments below if you didn't enjoy the video or if you did enjoy it, let me know what you think, be honest about it. Uh, if you have got one of these, then let me know what you think, because uh, I always appreciate the feedback. Also if you have got any questions. Uh, there might be something that I've not covered that you were thinking, oh, I wish, wish you'd mentioned it in the video. Again, pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.